Hi everyone, it's Russell Lowe speaking and in this tutorial I'm going to step through an Illustrator file to show you how to hand draw a uh, one point perspective. Uh, so this uh, artboard is representing a, a standard size notepad. Uh, you can see I've got a horizontal line across the middle there, that's my uh, horizon line. And uh, if you have the horizon line in the middle like this, it's a pretty uh, normal sort of place to have a horizon. Uh, and uh, you'll get a reasonable sort of perspective where some things are above you and some things are below. Uh, but if you drag the horizon line to the bottom of the page and or set the horizon line uh, to the bottom of the page, then it'll look like you're looking dramatically up at an object, which is quite, uh, like I say, dramatic. And then if you have the horizon line at the very top of the page or up towards the top of the page, it'll make the object look like you're flying above it. Uh, so the different places that you put the horizon lines will have different effects of uh, the impression of the geometry that you'll draw. Uh, the first thing we'll put on the horizon line is indicate a vanishing point. And the vanishing point is where all of the uh, parallel lines will uh, disappear on the horizon. And I've put my vanishing point to the right hand side of the page uh, in a one point perspective. Sometimes you'll see people put the vanishing point right in the middle of the page and that'll look like the geometry is coming straight out of the page, straight at you. Uh, great for interiors, uh, but for uh, looking at the outside of objects, having a vanishing point on the onto one side, the left or the right, uh, gives you that sort of uh, more three dimensional effect. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a, a three-dimensional cross. Uh, so I'll draw a vertical line, uh, a vertical rectangle, I, I should say, that uh, represents the front, front face of that uh, vertical column. Uh, and then the next step is to take each one of these corners and project it back to the vanishing point. So that's the outside bottom one, the inside bottom one, the outside bottom top and the outside outside um, the outside top and the outside uh, the inside top is the last one I've put in. Now uh, that gives me a, a, a see-through wall that projects all the way back to the horizon and potentially over the horizon because we can't see that far. Uh, so the next thing I'll do is I'll restrict how far it goes back uh, by creating a vertical line. Uh, between the two outside lines here that project backwards. And you can begin to see we've got a column being formed here. The next step is to create a rectangle that's going to represent the uh, one of the arms, one of the horizontal arms that sticks out the side of this cross. And uh, that's starting from the front face and projecting out to the right. You see it goes past the vanishing point. When it goes past the vanishing point in that direction, we won't be able to see the outside of it. Um, so let me show you uh, those lines. So from this intersection point on the vertical line here back to the vanishing point, from this uh, corner point back to the vanishing point is next, and then we need to draw a horizontal line showing how far back that geometry goes into space. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it from this uh, intersection point here and that uh, means that the it projects back the same distance that this projects backwards. So there we go. I could have made that line come back here and then that would have meant that this arm was actually deeper than the column that was holding it up. Uh, let's draw the other side next by drawing a rectangle representing its front face and then a line going from that corner there back to the vanishing point. That's that one. And then uh, because uh, the rest of this geometry is hidden by stuff around it, now we just have to draw the horizontal line and I'm going to draw that so that it lines up with this one here to say that both the, the arms and the column is actually the same depth. And there it is there. So the next step is to uh, take a slightly different approach and project forward from this face for the next arm of the cross goes actually forward into uh, the front of the drawing. 
So uh, to do that, I'm going to first draw a green rectangle here, and that's just green so that it makes it easier to see. And uh, you can see that I've uh, made my base. Uh, the root of this arm is uh, going to start at the bottom of the side arm on the right there and going to extend through to the top of the side arm on the left. And in this case, rather than project backwards from this uh, uh, rectangle, I'm going to take a line from the vanishing point and project through these intersection points, through these corners. So uh, first one here, and then I'll do another one projecting here. I've projected this through an arbitrary amount because I haven't decided how far uh, forward I'm going to project it yet. Project the other one, and then I'll project this corner here. I won't project this one here because as you can see things are getting pretty busy already and I don't need to. It's going to be hidden behind the solid geometry. So the next step is to create a, a horizontal line which says how far forward this is projecting. I just decided to put it there. I could have put it here. I could have put it back here. But uh, I've projected it that far forward and now I can take that corner and project it up vertically. So you can see my lines are either vertical, they're horizontal, or they go back as a diagonal to the vanishing point. Any diagonal line goes back to that vanishing point on rectilinear geometry. Uh, so I projected up to there, it's hit that one. I'm going to project left now, and then that's just an arbitrary amount. I just need it to go over here enough so that when I project this corner up, it intersects with it. And that's what it does. Uh, the advantage of um, uh, Illustrator is that it uh, lets me uh, line things up quite accurately. Uh, so, But if you're drawing this by hand, just project a bit further than you think you need to, like these lines here, and then, uh, and then you'll find that they'll cross over. You won't need to draw them again. Uh, and then the last one, let me turn off this rectangle in the background. I need to have an intersection line across the bottom here, which is where uh, we see that face intersect with this face here. So, next step is to project rear, and I won't need to project as many lines this time because uh, I've already got some lines back here. But I will project the top of it back from this point here, down, back to the vanishing point. Now, if I zoom in, I just need to finish off uh, the back side of this geometry. So that's the vertical line, and where it hits this edge here, it projects across to the left, and there we go. So now I've got all of the guidelines drawn in, and as you can see, it's pretty hard to see 3D geometry uh, with all of these guidelines in. Uh, so what I should do next is uh, maybe outline, the, um, outline all of the edges. So that's all of the edges, and uh, you can see immediately it starts popping out a bit more. Let's turn off some of the guidelines and uh, now you can see actually I'll turn off the horizon replace it with replace it with one that's sort of split so now it really does stand in front of the horizon and then uh, I'll add some shaded faces which really is popping out now much more than uh, when uh, when it was just all the guidelines so that happened when I drew those edges in and uh, so let's add some shaded faces. Once again, these faces are all uh, on the same, uh, on parallel planes. Uh, so they're um, uh, highlighting the three dimensions quite nicely. And then the last thing I'll do is a trick from, uh, or a technique from industrial design, where they draw an outline around the whole thing. And that's not the edges, that's just an outline sort of making this separate from the, uh, separate from the environment. So this is a uh, one hand-drawn one-point perspective, uh, very useful for uh, describing your ideas when you may be out on site. If you're, This is why you'd be drawing it in your notebook and, and not drawing it in, in Illustrator, uh, because you'd like to actually illustrate or, or describe an idea when you're out on site. You've got a pen, you've got a notepad, uh, you might not have a notepad, you might borrow a pen and draw directly over the contract documentation uh, that you're discussing at the time, and you'll uh, find that by drawing a, 
a quick perspective like this, it might be a lot clearer than trying to describe in words what it is that you uh, have an issue with or what you're trying to uh, message you're trying to get across to the person who might be building the thing for you. Uh, so once again, thanks for watching and uh, I look forward to seeing what you come up with in your own One Point Perspectives.